Hey, God bless you. Um, finally having the time to, making the time to, um, continue with the Bible study of how to be a soldier, uh, the translation in English, um, listening on my tablet, on my AirPod, um, to myself in Spanish, giving the Bible study, and, um, I will be translating the last section of this Bible study. It was four parts, so we got about, about 25 minutes left. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to try to pick up from there on the fourth episode and hopefully we'll be able to finish this and um, upload it today. Let's go for it. And exactly that, like we said, if we go to the beginning of the page and see through. All active soldiers in service have to um, go through two physical tests a year. And so all of this, once they pass the test, that's for an active soldier. An inactive soldier is not going to be worried about their uniform, that they're ready for an attack. They're going to be in the house. They're going to go back to their normal life. If they were a painter, they're going to go back to painting. <clears throat> they're not going to have their mind attentive to war and attack or anything like that. Why? Because they're not active. So when we are active soldiers, these are our responsibilities. And like I said, we put our mission first and never accept defeat. In Romans um, 12, 21. So let me um, try to find a Bible app on this um, tablet. Sorry, it's an older tablet. It runs a little slow. Um, being Romans 12, 21. I'm going to take a moment pause the video. Hang on. Okay. Romans 12, 21 says, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. We cannot accept that they that the enemy defeats us. We cannot accept defeat. Even if evil comes and they want to do something to us, it doesn't matter. We're going to the right thing and not accept defeat. We're going to keep fighting the battle and fight to the end until death or until Christ comes until God takes us out our last breath away the soldier also will never give up Matthew 13 um I don't think I gave the verse but he that um, doesn't give up will be until the end will be blessed. Okay, I'm gonna try to rewind it a bit. Sorry. Sorry, Matthew twenty four thirteen. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Never give up. What do, who knows what persevere means to keep going, going forward? Go one mile and quit? No, until the end. To keep going and keep going and keep going without ceasing. 
I'm going to say it, you know. When I hear about that word persevere, I always remember this one, brother. I had a party in my house one year. My pastor was there. A lot of brothers and sisters in Christ were there from church. We were making a lot of noise. It was somebody's birthday. But it was very late at night. And we were worshiping and praising. And one of the brothers, an older brother, he loved to create um, worship songs. And I don't remember the whole song. But I remember the refrain. But the song that he had written, we were all, we had our tambourines out. We were clapping our hands. It was late at night. And the refrain is, persevere, persevere. And we were just joyful. When we hear, but nobody heard. The brother kept saying, persevere, persevere. But they were knocking on the door and we were like, brother, shh. The police is here. They called the police on us because we were so joyful. He was persevering in his song. <laughs> the police came and everything. <laughs> How I remember that. I, I'm joyful to remember that. But persevere until the end. <laughs> we have to begin well the word of the Lord. The, the work of the Lord and sometimes we say oh, so many years in the in the gospel and nothing and they don't keep walking with the Lord why would a soldier go through all of this training trial tribulations All of this and put everything to the side and say, nope, I don't believe anymore. The enemy, may the Lord rebuke him, is seeking like a lion whom to devour. And if he cannot, um, kill us physically, then he looks to kill us spiritually. But when you feel a moment of weakness, when you feel with your head hanging down without strength, the person that's in charge of an army doesn't send in a soldier by themselves. They're not alone in this fight in the spiritual fight, battle. If you feel like you can't keep going forward in this fight, I'm here for you. My husband, the pastor is there for you. It can't be just any person, any soldier. It might be a new person, a new soldier that's not as experienced. You need a spiritual um, elder that will give you the hand and says, I will lift you up. I will pray for you. I will fast with you. Let's pray for you in this situation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up. That's how we can persevere together with Christ because without him, we can't achieve anything. when we persevere until the end. We know that really there isn't an end. There's not an end, really. You remember what happens to the body? Where does the body go? The dust it shall return. The spirit goes to where? To God. And the soul?
the soul lives forever. There is no end for the soul. There's an end for the body. But the soul has no end. So those that persevere until the end, until our physical bodies end, our weak flesh, if we can persevere until God takes our last breath and takes us to his presence, there, we will be saved. What is it that we said? Matthew 24. Um, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Romans 15, 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. That's why my husband, every service says, let's pray for these people that are not here today, that didn't come to church today. If we are here, it's because we are strong. So this word corresponds to us because if you are here, you are strong. Raise your hand if you're here tonight. So you are strong. So we have to strengthen those that are weak, We're not going to criticize the weak. No, we're going to say, Lord, have mercy for my brother, for my sister. Raise them up. There are some brothers and sisters in Christ that are very private, very private, that they don't speak to anybody and tell them what's happening. It's very easy to judge and say, hmm, they don't come. But behind closed doors, you don't know what's going on. We don't know what their trials and tribulations are. What corresponds to us is to never leave a fallen soldier behind. It's good to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. But are they going to know that? But that's why pa the pastor says, call them, send them a text message so that they can see, so that they know that we are conscious that there is a celestial army that is worried about their well-being, that they want to see, that they, um, so that they know that the soldier that's dying by your side, that you're trying to give them that first aid trying to resuscitate them, trying to raise them up, those that have fallen, those that are weak. We pertain to a superior army than the secular army. If the secular army adheres to these rules. How much more us? And the weapons. We're not going to read it again. But it's in, it's in Ephesians 5. Um, attack enemies there was, uh, sorry, that, I went really fast right there and I could not even catch everything that I was um, saying. Um, let me try to rewind it. Let me see. 
if I can make it go slower. I can't make it go slower. Oh, okay, hang on. Okay, and the weapons. We're not gonna. We're gonna uh, not gonna read it again, but it's in Ephesians six. To suppress the enemy. To free up. Um, our friendly um, soldiers, the friendlies. Attack um, faraway objects. Neutralize structures and vehicles that are fortified. Okay, we're going to read uh, Romans 16, 20 which says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Okay. We're almost done. Sorry for the walls of silence. So, we're going to have Satan underneath our feet. What a victory. We know that, unfortunately, the devil has power and has strength because we see him move in this earth every day. We can't turn the TV on open the screen on the tablet on the cell phone without seeing some evil news, horrible news. We know that the enemy has power and he has taken rule over this world completely. But even like that, God has given us the authority. Let's read it again. This is good. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Um, James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So to open up a space for the friendly army with our weapons. Again, this is live in front of a church congregation. So there's lulls when I'm quiet that I'm like flipping through my Bible to find the verses. If the enemy is there, impeding if that my army can keep moving forward then I have to move and do something how is it that the devil will flee from us when we submit to God How do we submit to God? Everything that's were written in the Bible, what we should do, what we shouldn't do, it's 
through obedience. Sometimes God wants to give us an experience. He speaks to his children in visions and dreams, through a person, through a prophet. But he speaks to us and he says, go and do such a thing. Those walls of Jericho, it seemed strange, right? What did they have to do? Walk around the city in silence? It seemed like a crazy thing. But when they obeyed God, when they were submissive to God, they gained the victory over their enemy. And when we obey God and we submit ourselves to him, the devil has to flee from us. Because he says, oh, this person is not playing in the church. They're not pretending to be a brother or sister in Christ. Because when God says to do something, when God says, get up at five in the morning to fast and you do it, and then the devil goes running and says, oh, she's coming with a spiritual attack. to um, get rid of um, far away objects. We're talking about um, weapons. Ephesians uh, 6. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Where? In high places. In other words, in that atmosphere. There. Very far. That's where our enemy, that's where our fight is. And a soldier, it's weapon has to be able to attack things far away. If I'm not mistaken, the literal weapon, I think it's called a bazooka. It can throw, it can um, fire very far away. It's like a missile. And it does it from very far away. We also know those that have studied about World War II. But the first atomic bomb was, um, was thrown in Japan. They didn't do it there in Japan. They did it from up in the air, from far away. And they destroyed that city. There were two cities. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A horrible destruction. But it is the duty of a soldier to get rid of um, enemies from far away from a distance or objects. This verse is very key. Because if the enemy uses those that are beside us to annoy us, to make our life impossible. And we think that we have to use our weapon against that person. No. Mm -mm. The person that's beside us, irritating us, bothering us, making our life impossible. We should say, oh, you know what? I need to be attacking objects that are far away. Even though this person that's beside me is bothering me, I know that this is not the person that's beside me. That comes from celestial regions. Let me get on my knees and go to war. Let me go and start fasting and start fighting. And that is how I can attack that faraway object. 
with the weapons, the powerful weapons that God has given to us. And to conclude, neutralize structures and fortified um, uh, vehicles. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Against the wiles of the devil. Do you know what a while is? W-I-L-E? Anybody know what a while is? It's also said it's snare. Those that have to go hunting for their food, they use a snare. It's a trap. It can be made out of metal or whatever. <laughs> they seem like teeth made out of metal. So that when the animal steps in it, it traps it. But you hide it. When amongst brush or leaves. So that the animal doesn't realize that it's there. That's what it's talking about here in this verse. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In other words, something that's there, ready to destroy us, to take us unto death, but it's hidden. That we're not even going to see it. We're not even going to realize that it's there. But We have to neutralize those, those wiles, those snares, because he wants to trap us. But that's why the key for the soldier is the training, the morals, the values, everything that you learn in the army, it stays with you. If somebody one day has to work with somebody that's in the soul in the has been in the army they are rigid they are very strict to the rules you have to be 5 10 15 minutes early to be on time they walk differently they have their hair a certain way you could tell because it's it's ingrained in them it stays in them But what we always have to put on is our armor because that's going to help us. Besides everything else that God has taught us because we never stop learning in this, in this walk with the Lord. The armor is essential. We cannot... Um, be careless in any way so that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, never give up, and never accept defeat. And that's the end of this Bible study. I'm sorry it took so long for me to get to this fourth part. I hope you enjoyed this series, and God bless you.